After all the talk about rewriting in Rust, I think I have a version which is good enough to be shared. For folks who do not have a background about this utility, it's a tool that I launched last year on my website. It's called Crypto Volatility Grid. It's a dashboard that gives you volatility details of different pairs across different time frames. Now the new version is built from Rust ground up and it's not just a simple rewrite of existing features in Rust. It's a complete redesign of the tool and it's built to show you real-time updates and support multiple indicators. In this version, we have two indicators, uh, volatility and RSI. But in the future, I have plans to add more indicators. And the previous version was a web application, which is still available on my website. But the newer version is a desktop app. So I'm quite excited to share this new utility with you and end this year with a bang. So let's get into the video. First, let's see how to set it up. I left a link to the code base in the description box. If you scroll down, you will see an option called releases. If you hit on releases, let's look at the latest release. And here you have downloadables for different operating systems. So you have one for Windows, one for Mac OS. And even for Mac OS, you have the older x86 version and also the newer M1 or you know M series lineup. Or if you're using a Linux system, you can download the Linux downloadable. So you have a file for each operating systems and you can just download this file and start using the tool right away. I know that a large chunk of my audience are non-programmers who are only interested in the utilities and don't really care that much about how things are built. So I took these extra measures to make the user experience as smooth as possible. In the future, if you want to access an older version of this utility, you can go to releases and you will find the previous versions as well. So for now, we just have two versions, version 0.1.1 and uh, 0.1.2. For now, let's use the latest version. But I'm just letting you know that uh, the older releases will still be available on this link. Okay. I use an M1 Mac system. So let's download that version and continue this video. After you download and unzip the file, you will find this executable inside that folder. If you run it for the first time, you will get a pop-up that Apple could not verify whether this is some kind of malware. So this is blocked by default. So when I built this utility, there are two ways to resolve it. Either you can allow permission to run this. That's one way to do it. But a better way to do it is for me to get Apple developer license and sign this executable with the Apple developer license, but it's not free. Uh, you have to pay around $100 every year to get an Apple developer license which I don't have at the moment. So for now, you would have to run a command to execute this file. But again, you might be hesitant to run this because I'm just a random guy on the internet. So why would you trust anyone, right? So I have made the code completely open source. So feel free to look at the code base and take that decision yourself. But if you're still hesitant to run it, it's all right, it's, it's your call. Again, like I said, the code is open source, so I'll leave that decision to you. If you decide to run it, here is the command to enable the permissions. I'm running this command inside my VS Code terminal itself, but you can run it on any terminal on the Mac system. And when you hit enter, when you run this, you don't see any response, but this will allow the executable to run now. Now when I open it, I should see the UI as well as a small terminal where you will see all the logs okay so i can expand the terminal i can even make it full screen and this is the user interface i'm going to come out of the full screen mode and here you just have a dashboard and the title for the dashboard on the top left corner and you can increase or decrease the font size here and if you go to the settings panel this is where you define the preset that you want to run by default you get the default preset and if you scroll below, I'm going to quickly explain this settings panel. So here you have an option to create a new pre preset. So let's say I want to create a preset called demo using this existing default preset. You can hit create from current and that should create the demo preset. Okay. And below that you can add the pairs that you want to monitor. And this version is restricted to only 200 pairs. I'll explain why that is the case. But yeah, you can enter a maximum of 200 pairs over here. And this is connected to Binance Spot Exchange. So keep that in mind. 
so only enter the pairs that are available in the binance spot exchange okay and it's not restricted to a particular market you can either choose pairs from usdt market or btc market or you know it's not restricted by any market so you can put in any pair okay and below that you have the settings for different indicators for now we just have volatility and rsi but if you want to enable this indicator you can choose this toggle if not you can just you know disable this but if you want volatility inside that you can select different time frames and within the time frame you can select the threshold as well so let's say i want to put the 15 minute threshold as 1% so if the value exceeds 1% to the upside or downside as in minus 1% those cells will be highlighted so these highlights make it easy to spot uh, you know spot coins and you know where the movement is actually happening and on the 1 hour i'll just set it to 10% and even on the 4 hour i'm just going to set it to 10% and daily also 10% so these controls are very similar to how you set thresholds on the existing version volatility grid and after that you have settings for rsi and you can select the length or you know you can select the source and you can also toggle between different time frames we don't have thresholds for rsi because by default 30 is considered as overbought and above 70 is considered as oversold so the highlights will be applied accordingly and i don't think the source uh, field works as of now so the current version only takes the closing price as the source by default so this may not work when you try it out and let's hit save so that should save the settings but the preset is not enabled yet so to enable or run the preset you need to hit this play button okay and let's hit play for now we just have two pairs so if i hit play and close this panel you should see the dashboard uh, with these two pairs okay and uh, and everything runs locally so when you set these values and run the preset the dashboard connects to binance exchange it will fetch the historical values and also connect to the web socket to fetch the real time values and calculate these indicators at runtime and show the dashboard okay and uh, i think the columns are pretty self explanatory you have the pair and time frames and also you know the indicator for the time frame and also you have one for rsi and what if you want to add more pairs right so the default uh, preset only has two pairs but what if you want to add 100 pairs the best way the right way to do it is to use this api the exchange info api offered by binance and this allows you to actually get the pairs present inside the exchange but if you're not too technical you can actually ask ai to provide the top 100 pairs or or what not so i just give you i'll provide you with this prompt you can customize this prompt based on your choice for example if you want instead of usdt market if you want btc market or instead of top 100 if you want 10 pairs or no you can just adjust the prompt and get the required pair so this will give you a comma separated list of pairs so i can just copy this and paste it on the settings panel so if i go back to the settings panels i can just paste the values here and you can see there are 111 pairs for now and if i hit save Let's create a new preset for this and call it demo2 and create new preset and let's save this preset and if I run demo2 so the dashboard will now display all these pairs the thing is because everything runs locally there are some drawbacks with this which we'll discuss later but one thing that you notice right away is that it takes a while to set up that's because the APIs will have to adhere to the rate limit set by the exchange. So it will take a while for these values to first download the historical data and then connect to the WebSocket and, you know, just get the calculation up and running. So it might take a minute or two, depending on the number of pairs you have to see the values pop up on the dashboard. And then you have an option to increase or decrease the font size. Okay. One thing I noticed is that when you get the pairs, list of pairs from a prompt, uh, some pairs do not have any trading activity at all. For example, Matic USDT, right? You see the values, the threshold values are zero and RSI values are always zero. That means there is no trading activity that's currently happening for this pair. So these values will not change over time. So the only way to do it is just go to the settings panel and remove all those pairs. 
this is just a one time thing that you have to do but in the future version i'll make it even more convenient okay the code for this project is completely open source uh, you can find the link in the description box and under releases where you see the downloadable files for different operating system you can go to the code tab and inside the source folder is where you can find the entire code base and along with the code you also have a few docs to help you understand the code along with the readme file so if, you, if let's go back to the code right so you should see a readme file with you know a detailed description of what this tool does and a few other technical details what crates were used to build it so the front end is built with egui and uh, to manage async task have used tokio and uh, there are few de technical details on how this is built and under the docs i've also added a uml diagram to that will help you visualize the different modules present inside the utility and how they communicate with one another so the goal here is to keep everything transparent i'm just a random guy on the internet so there is no reason to trust me so i feel like making the code open source helps improve the trust factor and so why am i doing it what is my objective well my goal here is to become a better rust programmer and rust is not an easy language to learn so i find that building these utilities is a better way to engage with the community especially in a day and age where the coding tutorials are dead it's not just me but other popular creators in the space have also expressed a similar opinion and i personally noticed it if i go to my channel right the last if you look at the last 10 videos not even a single one of them crossed over a thousand views so even i noticed a significant drop in the number of views that i get so what's next uh, i want to add more indicators but before that i want to optimize the existing version i want to minimize the cpu and memory footprint to as little as possible so i'll first work on that i'll also make detailed technical videos on how this is built from ground up so if you are interested in rust programming how to use rust to build trading related applications then you might find those videos interesting or informative i also want to improve the user interface so in the settings panel right instead of uh, copying the pairs from a prompt or you know i want to improve the usability of this interface i also want to add a customization option so that you can you know fine tune the colors the colors of you know uh, the highlights or or you know i want to make as customizable as possible so that you can make this dashboard your own this is how i feel about wipe coding if you take the entire spectrum of all the programmers on one end you have pure wipe coders who treat code as a black box and they just keep continue prompting until they get the right interface or you know or the right functionality on the other extreme end you have hardcore nerds who use neovim and type each and every single line of code manually i think i sit somewhere in the middle i think the days of memorizing syntax is obsolete that doesn't mean you don't understand the code that you're shipping so i feel like using instead of purely wipe coding doing an ai assisted development is more symbiotic for now until ai can do it all so it's an iterative process i'm more focused on the best design patterns and then i guide ai to implement exactly how i want so that way i have more control and more confidence in the code that i'm shipping so on the spectrum i feel like i fall somewhere in the middle where i'm doing an ai assisted programming until ai no longer needs my assistance or we enter a dystopian future where religious fundamentalists take over and human written code is treated as blasphemy